Each plant contains a different combination of nutrients and chemical compounds. And that's why this field is a natural drugstore for the animal chewing its way into number eight in the countdown, the sheep. Long considered one of the world's least intellectual creatures, the sheep is actually outstanding in the field of pharmacology. Australian scientists suggest sheep may self-medicate by eating particular plants to remedy various ailments. Experiments show that sheep naturally infected with parasitic worms will select plants that act as a cleansing purgative. Clover, for example, contains high levels of defensive compounds called tannins that deter hungry insects. Research shows that when sheep eat lots of clover, they have fewer internal parasites. Of course, it's not just sheep that use herbal remedies. Humans have benefited from the healing properties of plants for thousands of years. It's estimated that more than 80,000 species of plant have medicinal properties, and some can be found in your backyard. According to Californian herbalist Amanda McQuake Crawford, it's easy to make a very simple remedy for colds and flu. We're going to grate a piece of ginger root. Now, we say that the amount of ginger root that you need in any one dose is about the size of your own thumb. So I think I'm going to use just a small piece like that to grate up today. And ginger root is not only full of ginger oil and shig oil and all kinds of wonderful essential oils, it's a great anti-inflammatory. Now, licorice root, these small pieces are going to deliver all of their antibacterial and their antiviral and anti-inflammatory properties. Peppermint has menthol and essential oils that give it a wonderful freshness and it smells and tastes pretty good to most people. Close this up and these dried leaves and that grated ginger root are gonna swell up a little bit in our water. There's peppermint leaf and licorice root and ginger root and together the three of them make a fabulous tasting tea. Mmm, smells good. Oh, that's delicious. According to the World Health Organization, plants are the primary form of medicine for up to 80% of the world's population and many animals. I was visiting friends when I was lecturing in the Pacific Northwest in Canada, and their very elderly dog was chewing on their willow tree, and they tried everything to stop him. And when our hosts were asking us why this might be, we explained, well, it's the original source willow bark of the anti-inflammatory compounds that we know as aspirin. And so this is a dog that knew very well that when the cold, wet, rainy season was coming on, he needed to chew some willow bark and get some anti-inflammatories and ease up those poor old hips and allow him to walk around the backyard in some peace. And it's not just old dogs that are learning new tricks as these woolly medics also seem to be able to sniff out herbal remedies in the plants around them. Who knows? Perhaps one day farmers could save a fortune in pharmaceuticals simply by planting a variety of different herbs in their fields for self-medicating sheep. Having a baby can be a jumbo-sized problem when you're the largest land animal on the planet, the elephant. It's pregnant for 660 days. That's 22 months. How would you like to give birth to something that weighs an eye-watering 260 pounds? Perhaps it's no surprise that a female elephant may go in search of drugs to ease her labor pain. A researcher in East Africa followed a pregnant elephant for more than a year. Usually, she'd walk about three miles a day and eat a strictly uniform diet.
But near the end of her pregnancy, the mother-to-be walked 17 miles in one day. There she is. There she is. Hey, there we go. She ended up beside a tree from the Borach family, a plant that wasn't part of her normal diet. Then she ate it all, from leaves to trunk. Four days later, she gave birth to a healthy calf. Strangely enough, the researcher also discovered that some African women brew tea using leaves from the very same tree to induce labor. It's been suggested that a chemical in the leaves may help start contractions and relax muscles around the birth canal. Of course, if we were pregnant for 22 months, we'd probably walk far more than 17 miles to find something to help ease labor pains. The researcher never again observed the elephant eating that tree species, but believes the pachyderm's behavior is more than just a coincidence. The pregnant elephant's search for a medicinal plant is why these enormous obstetricians are number five in the countdown. In many parts of the world, when people become ill, they don't have access to medical doctors. Instead, as much as 80% of the world's population visits traditional healers for their primary form of health care. And herbs are the main source of medicine. In tropical Africa, people use more than 4,000 plants for medicinal purposes. Just like the animals swinging in to number four in the countdown, the chimpanzee. After years of observing chimp behavior, primatologists believe these apes are the original jungle doctors, prescribing medicine from natural sources throughout the jungle. It's thought that chimps use over 30 different plants just to treat stomach complaints, and sometimes they take great care in preparing their medicine. These chimps are dosing themselves with leaves from the Aspilia plant. But they have to be rolled in the mouth, not chewed, in order to preserve the hairs on the leaves. Then they swallow the little green pill. Once in the digestive system, the hairy leaves unroll and trap parasitic worms, sweeping them out of the chimps intestines. Another useful plant normally shunned as a food source is the mjonso tree. It seems chewing on the bitter bark is how chimps cure diarrhea. When researchers analyzed the mjonso tree's juices, they discovered 13 previously unknown substances with antibacterial, antiparasitic, and even anti-tumor properties. The plant's also valued by African locals because it has more than 25 medicinal uses, 